This video is going to teach you about how to use the nth term when working with sequences. We'll look at getting a sequence from the nth term, which is um, a formula, and then how to find the nth term from the sequence when, if you've already been given it. So, first of all, finding the sequence then. When nth term um, is given in this format, the n is obviously an algebraic term, um, and I'd like to think of it as representing the word number, because when you're creating a sequence, you're looking for the terms within it. So the terms within a sequence are the numbers that make it up. So, for example, the two times table, two, four, six, eight. That is the, the two, the four, the six, and eight are the terms within this sequence. Now, we find the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, depending on how many the examiner asks us to find. So if we find the first term in a sequence, we're looking for the first number in the sequence. So I'm going to replace, you have to know your substitution for this, I'm going to substitute the number 1 in for n. So rather than it being two lots of n, it's going to be two lots of 1, which is 2. And then I'm going to add on the 5. So my first term is 7. For my second term, I'm going to replace this n with the number 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. Then I'm going to add on the 5, which gives me a second term of 9. To find the third term, I'm going to replace the n with a 3. So it's 2 times 3, which we know is 6. Again, add on the 5, gives me a value of 11. Now you might see that there's a pattern emerging, that it's going up in twos. Let's just check for the fourth term. So 2 times 4 is 8. Add on the 5, gives me 13. So the sequence will continue with adding on twos. Whoops. Adding on twos each time to give you the next term in the sequence. If you have a negative number in front of n, that doesn't matter. It still represents the number of the term you're looking for, except that you need to know your rules for negative numbers. So when we're looking for the first term, you need to know that when you multiply negative 4 by 1, you get negative 4. I'm just going to change the pen colour. So minus 4 times 1, we know is minus 4. And then I'm going to add on 8, which is going to give me a first term of 4. For the second term, I'm going to do minus 4 times the number 2, which is minus 8. I'm going to add on the 8, which gives me a value of 0. For the third term, minus 4 times 3. Add on the 8, gives me a value of minus 4. And again, you should see that we're decreasing in 4s each time. So now the next one will be minus 8, minus 12, minus 16, and so on. So the next three sections I'm going to show you um, with two examples and we're going to look at all three sections um, in one question. So in the exam you'll be given a sequence and you'll be asked various questions and normally the, the, these questions will come in one question as part A, B, C, D and E. So we're going to do them together um, in this video as well. So the first thing you always want to do when you see a sequence is work out what is going up in. So do some little arrows. Okay, 7 to 13, you need to add 6. 13 to 19, we need to add 6. 19 to 25, we need to add 6. So if they ask you to complete the sequence, you just continue by adding 6 again. Add another 6. And if they ask you to, to, to describe it, you literally just need to write down in words that you need to add 6. Or you could write add 6 with a numerical 6, that's fine. They then might ask you to find the nth term. Now the nth term means we're going back to this formula. So we've now got the sequence and we're going in this direction. So we're going from the sequence to the nth term. So as you can see from before, when we had 2n as the start of our sequence, we went up in 2s. When we had minus 4 at the beginning of the the nth term, sorry, we were going down in fours. So the number in front of the n 
represents the difference in the sequence. So if it's going up in sixes, I can write down 6n. And if you think about substituting in our numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this would just give us the 6 times table. So 6, 12, 18, 24, etc. Now, looking at our sequence, we don't have 6, 12, 18, 24, but we have something very similar. We have 7, 13, 19, 25. So you should see that this is one more than the 6 times table. So we just need to add 1 at the end of the nth term. Another way to remember that is you can go, either go backwards, so you can take away 6 from the first term. So 7 take away 6 would give you 1, which is the same as down here. Or you can think, right, well, I don't want to start my sequence at 6. I want to start my sequence at 7. Therefore, I need to add 1 on. Uh, another question they might ask is finding the 50th term. So you know that your nth term is 6n plus 1. We know that this n represents the numbers in the sequence, so the terms within the sequence. So we're just going to substitute 50 in for n. So 6 times 50, and then we're going to add on 1. So 6 lots of 50 is going to be 300. Add on the 1 is 301. The next one is, is 106 in the sequence? Um, this is quite a hard question. It doesn't come up every year, um, but it, it has come up in, in the past, and so you, you, should need, you should know how to do it. To be able to do this question, you need to be able to solve equations. Because what we're going to, the way you want to think about it is, well, if 106 is in the sequence, then it's going to equal the nth term. So 6n plus 1 must equal 106 at some point, so for some value of n, for one term, if it is in the sequence. So we take away 1 from both sides, and we're left with 6n is equal to 105. Now to solve this, we need to divide both sides by 6. So 6n divided by 6, and 105 divided by 6. Now, if this value for n, if your answer is, is a whole number, if it's an integer, then that 105 is in the sequence. If, it, if, it's, if you can't divide it exactly, then it's not. So, I can do my division up here. So, 6 into 1 doesn't go. 6 into 10 goes once with a remainder of 4. 6 into 45 um, goes 6 times with a remainder of 3. So because it doesn't go in exactly, because there's no, no solution here, then we're going to say no, it's not in the sequence. The number 105 is not in the sequence. Okay, let's look at um, a decreasing sequence then. So taking away 3 each time, so that means this is going to be 3 here and then 0. Describing it, well it's take away 3. Or you could say subtract 3 or minus 3, they would be fine. The nth term, we start with minus 3n, because that's what we're going down in. Now, I don't want to start my sequence at minus 3. I want to start my sequence um, at 15. So what do, I need to, what do I need to add to minus 3 to get to 15? We need to add 18. Another way of doing it, like I said earlier, is going the opposite direction. So if you add 3 to the first term, you end up with 18. So that's the end of the nth term. The tenth term, so that's going to be, it's like before, minus 3 times 10 plus 18. So that's going to be minus 30 plus 18 is minus 12. Is minus 20 in the sequence? Again, you need to be able to solve equations for this. So if you uh, not confident in solving equations, you need to go back to that because math, different parts of maths come up all over the um, exam paper. So if you just, you, it's not just missing out on one set of marks. You need to be able to apply maths all over the place. So make sure you are confident in all of these areas. So minus three n plus eighteen is equal to minus whoops minus twenty. So I'm going to take away eighteen from both sides. That leaves me with minus 3n is equal to minus 38. 
Now immediately I can I know that 38 is not in the three times table and so no, minus 20 is not in the sequence. 